about 15 years ago, I guess, I was sent out on a story. It was a measles outbreak in Chicago for CNN. And we are on our way to one of the most dangerous housing projects in Chicago. And the photographer I was with that day said, this is just so stupid. It's a measles story. I, I, I don't want to do this. Well, I was an eager reporter, and I said, no, this is important. They're going to be inoculating kids today. The health department would be there as well. And he said, yeah. And think of all those, those gangbangers who are going to have guns waiting for us. And I said, oh, come on. It's, it's going to be fine. We got there, we went through the projects, we knocked on so many doors begging people <laughs> to talk to us about this issue. And we finally got everything we needed, we're ready to go. And we're walking out, we're sort of in the quad, and I said, oh, hang on one minute, I wanna do a stand up and it would be really good to do it right here. He said, are you kidding? You want me to shoot a stand up when people could be shooting at us? No, I'm not doing that. And I said, we really have to have it for this story. It's my conclusion. Oh, he's storming around. He is so unhappy with me. All right, just fine. All right. He puts the camera on the tripod. Do you have this memorized? And I said, no. I was about to tell him I never memorize because then it sounds canned. What? You don't have it memorized? How are we going to do this? At that moment, I'm choking, panicking. I can do it. He goes, go. You get one chance. Go. And the panic button went off in my head. Everything I wanted to say was suddenly gone. And for a split second, I thought, okay, I'm going to let him win. I won't do a stand-up for this story. And then the little voice in my head, my coach said, Connie, you know more about this story than anyone else. You have an obligation as a journalist to talk it through to look into the camera as if it is your friend or a host of friends and just talk them through the end of this story. And I did that. And he sort of looked at me. We broke down the equipment, got in the car, and he said, hmm, you never memorize? You never memorize your stand-ups? And I said, no, I don't. And he said, I'll work with you again. So I got a little respect that day in holding my line, but if the little voice had not popped in my head, if I had not remembered my training, the mentoring, that little coach voice that said, you can do this, relax, and just tell the story.